Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. This video is part of the series where we are comparing Azure VMs and EC2 instances. In this video, we will be creating EC2 instance. Here I'm already logged into AWS Management Console. To begin creating an EC2 instance, Click on the service and let's navigate to the EC2 services. It is the first service under compute. Once you are here, click on the instances under the instances category. It will show you any of the existing instances that you have in your environment along with its instance state, whether it is running or in the stop state, it will show that show you that right over here. To create a new instance, Click on launch instance button. The very first thing that you are going to do is choose an Amazon machine image that is AMI. This image tells you whether you are going to deploy a Windows VM versus a Linux VM and what particular distro of Linux are you going to select. Since I'm having a free tier, I'll select only the VMs that are only the images that are covered under this free tier. I can scroll down, go through all these images that are covered under the free tier. For example, I can select this Microsoft Windows Server 2016 base image, click on the select button. And just so that you know, EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. EC2 instance is exactly what Microsoft refers to as an Azure virtual machine. This is a virtual machine. This is your compute resource. So just like with any compute resource, you need to define its number of virtual CPUs along with its memory in gigabytes. So over here, under the free tier, uh, I'm eligible for T2 Micro, which has one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of memory. I'll click on next. And in the third screen, in the third step, we are going to configure the instance details. That is details of your virtual machine. You select how many number of instances, that is how many number of copies of this virtual machine will be created. By default, you will want to create only one unless until you want to deploy the same application on multiple EC2 instances and have those instances running behind a load balancer. If that is your scenario, you can leverage multiple instances and deploy multiple instances in a single go, or you can even create an auto scaling group. We will be covering auto scaling group in a subsequent video. Now from purchasing perspective, Microsoft had spot instances and hub licensing over here in AWS, you have the option to request spot instances. Spot instances is exactly the similar concept where if AWS has some free space lying on some data center, it will create your EC2 instance, leveraging that particular free space. AWS gets the benefit of leveraging the free space, whatever it had on all the data centers or all, all the servers that they have in their data center. You get the advantage of getting your EC2 instance hosted for a very cheaper price. Next up, you select all your networking details. That is your virtual network. AWS calls it virtual private cloud. So you select if there is already one in your environment, you select that one, or you can create a new one right here. You select a subnet in that particular virtual network. And then if you want to assign a public IP address, you can select that over here as well. You have various other options like placement group or capacity reservation, um, joining it to directly to a domain, setting up an IAM role on this particular EC2 instance. For now, we are going to skip all these details, leave these details at the default values and going to, to the next section, which is to adding the storage. In this section, you will always have at least one volume, that is at least one disk. This disk is your root volume or your OS disk. Under the free tier, I have 13 GB of the, for the size of this particular disk. You can increase or decrease as per your requirement for the OS disk 
as well as you can add more disks to your EC2 instance by clicking on this add new volume button. You have three options for the volume type that is general purpose SSD, provisioned IOPS SSD and magnetic standard as, uh, disk type. The last one is your conventional, your magnetic tape disk. This is the lowest uh, IOPS as well as the lowest cost. You want to optimize your cost as well as your IOPS that is input output operations per second, which defines how fast the data is read from the disk and how fast the data is written to the disk. With provisioned IOPS, you have much more granular control. Mm -hmm. This IOPS but, uh, space, it becomes a text box and you can type in and configure the IOPS available on the disk up to a maximum IOPS based on the size of the disk. Mm -hmm. For now, I'll leave it at general purpose SSD and proceed ahead. Tags is a way of categorizing your resources in AWS. For example, you can apply a tag for cost center. It gives you much more granular control on your resources. Later on leveraging tags, you can create automation. You can filter your resources. You can even filter your billing reports. In the next section, we are going to configure security group on the EC2 instance. Here we dictate what is going to open on the particular EC2 instance in terms of connectivity. So for example, in here we are allowing RDP connection to the virtual machine or EC2 instance on port 3389. 0.0.0.0 0.0 means anywhere, all the IP addresses. Mm -hmm. If you want to mention that, this is how you do th that. It's also called quad zero IP addressing, which donates everything. It's not a best practice. You should not be doing this in production or even in the development environment at all. This opens potential security risks. You should be having a smaller, as small uh, IP address range that you can define in the CIDR notation. Finally, you review all the details that we have filled so far. You can navigate to all the sections. You can expand any section and see what were the settings that were done in that particular section. You can click on the edit button in front of any section and jump back into that section to reconfigure the settings. And once you are ready to hit and provision your EC2 instance, mm -hmm. click on this launch button. Finally, it will ask you to create a key pair if you don't have any, or if you have any, then choose an existing key pair. You can create one by selecting create a new key pair from this drop down and providing a name for the key pair. Or if I have any, I can select that you choose an existing key pair. I also have the option to proceed without a key pair. Then I'll need to already know the password that is built into this particular image. I already have a key pair, so I'll select that and I'll click on I acknowledge. Key pair is a combination of private key and a public key. Public key is what is being used to encrypt and log in into the virtual machine. The private key is something when you create the key pair for the first time, you have already downloaded that private key and you leverage that private key to connect to your EC2 instance. Finally, click on launch instances to actually initiate the deployment for this particular instance. So it says that your instances are now launching. After a certain period of time, your instances will be up and running. What you can do is you can click on services and navigate back to EC2 section and then click on instances to navigate back to the instances screen. Here, this is the instance we just created. If you want to provide it an, with a name, navigate to the name column and click on this pencil icon. And provide it with a dis, more descriptive name than the instance ID that AWS uses internally to identify this particular instance uniquely. 
Now in here, if you want to connect to your EC2 instance, make sure that that instance is selected. Click on that to make sure that it is highlighted and then click on the connect button at the top. You can download the RDP file, that is your remote desktop file, through which you can connect to the public IP address of this particular machine. If your data center is connected to the AWS data center through some direct connect or through VPN, then you can even leverage the private IP address to connect to that particular EC2 instance. For the AMI, the Amazon machine image, when it gets deployed as an EC2 instance, AWS automatically creates a password for you for the administrator within that particular AMI. You can click on the get password after the instance has been initiated and deployed. Then this password is available for you using which you can connect to your EC2 instance. If you are having EC, uh, Linux AMI selected, that is your EC2 instances of some Linux distro, then you can even leverage the key pair the private file of the key pair to connect to your EC2 instance. If you want to take more actions, you can click on the action menu or you can right click on this particular instance name and it gives you the same action menu from where you can select connect and you can take much more actions like stopping the EC2 instance or rebooting it or terminating it right from here. That's all for now for this particular video. We saw how to create EC2 instance and how to connect to that particular EC2 instance. In the subsequent videos, we will be looking at how Azure Virtual Machines compare to EC2 instances in much more detail. Thanks for tuning in.